So November 8th was election day. You know, everyone waiting, suspensefully, night, trying to see who won. So I come from a fairly conservative family, mostly economically based. And so the night before the election, me as well as my parents were pretty sure that Trump wasn't going to win. I was thinking if Hillary does end up winning, which I was pretty sure was going to happen, tomorrow might be kind of a rough day because I can get pretty worked up. Well, after I'd watched the election the night previous, I remember Donald Trump winning and just thinking, wow, there are going to be a lot of people mad about this. I didn't think anything was going to happen at school, but, you know, yeah. you never know. I came to school expecting a bit of dissent among the ranks, you know, kind of people having their signs and people protesting or getting mad at each other, you know, I expected that. But I didn't expect the actual depth of what happened. The day after the election was, the everything was really tense at school. And there was just a couple of guys in this big pickup truck with a bunch of Make America Great Again signs. And they're just like waving them around, they're going around the parking lot. And they actually passed a couple out to people that wanted one. You know, like people were passing out Trump signs and I get it, you know, it's, you know, freedom of speech and that's your president now, so I understand. In, in the vein of sports, i.e. the Civil War football game, there's, there's a history and a culture that comes from the competitive rivalry. So since Trump won and people were wearing like Trump shirts and Trump hats to school the next day, how is that any different than if like the Ducks won over the Beavers and I was excited about their win? Uh, I'm a Cavs fan. It, when the Cavs won the finals, I was very excited and very proud about that and I was uh, voicing my opinion. So I feel like you should be able to celebrate but in your own fashion and not in the face of the opponent. Or you can like you can celebrate but not directing it at a certain person, you know, like or a certain type of person. But nobody's nobody's life, livelihood, security, safety is threatened by that. Uh, people are free to embrace their school and you know, it's a little bit of the small spoils that come with did you win or did you lose? How are your team win or lose? Uh, whereas this became more personal. At the parking lot, there were uh, Trump signs, which I totally respected because that's 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 who they are. That's what they want to do. Great, but if you come, when you come to me and you shove that poster in my face, it's it, that's that's not right. And it was not vi physical violence, but that's something that shouldn't be happening. When I first came to school, nothing had changed. And slowly throughout the day, um, it escalated, the atmosphere. And during, during the, the middle of the day, I started to realize that um, a lot of students felt really uncomfortable. And there was a lot of yelling in my fourth period class. Yeah. People that were had far left opinions kind of antagonized people that had uh, kind of far-right opinions, so. The day after the elections, it was like walking through a school that I've never been in. Um, the atmosphere, it was like more anger than I've ever felt in these halls. Um, I, I, I felt unsafe at school. I felt like targeted. I felt like people didn't want me here for a reason, and I've never felt that way in the 12, 12 years I've gone to school. Just a lot of kind of dumb jokes about um, it could be towards people's race or just um, just like on maybe who people voted for. I think there's a lot of dumb jokes that really didn't need to be said. Some people went too far with their opinions and they were pushing it on other people and some of their opinions were disrespectful towards people. Trump supporters were pretty loud, uh, me included. I was very excited um, about the election. Uh, Hillary supporters were also pretty loud in um, them making comments towards people that were happy that Trump won. Yes, Trump supporters were going up and over the top, kind of. There were ripped up signs, people were arguing, people were yelling at each other, they were grouping up and ganging up on one or two people, one or two minorities. It they began to yell at me and insult me in a certain way that made me not feel safe. I'm, I was scared for my life the day after the election. I couldn't even want to go out during lunch because the just supporters of them, 
the became I was afraid they might become physically abused instead of um, other than verbally. I witnessed people being racist, calling people names, saying a bunch of stuff like they need to go back to Mexico, all the Mexicans, that Trump's going to kick them out of America. You know, people handing out the Trump supporter posters and like pointing at Hispanic people and yelling and saying a lot of hurtful words. Uh, comments like, having blonde in your hair is not going to make you legal. When are you going to get deported? Mexicans have to leave now. Um, the neighbors. Yeah, they were saying, aren't you glad? Go back home. You're going to be reunited with your family. Pack your bags. You know, like, Things I'll... like that really affect us. There, there's a one girl in my class, first period, who was told to kill herself about six times that day because she was a Trump supporter. As I was walking down this, near the side of the school, some guy inside of his black truck threw a cup of Sprite right on my jacket. So he tells me to go back to Iraq. You go, <laughs> I'm not even gonna say that. Uh, so that was when I didn't want to go to school. I felt attacked. I felt like I was being targeted by the majority of the students here. I didn't know who to really talk to. I felt alone most of the time. And to see other family members going through the same thing, it kind of just hurt. And I felt like I didn't know what to do. Like walking in the halls, I could hear students remarking and laughing about someone else's reaction um, to getting a derogatory remark and basically harassing them. Um, probably the hardest one for me was a conversation I had with a student talking about um, having kids he felt like were his friends say to him, you know, well, you're going to get deported. And even if, you know, even if they, there was like, there was some conversation about like, well, maybe this plan to deport kids is going to be too expensive or, to, you know, whatever. I'm like, well, we'll just, we'll just drive around in our trucks and round people up ourselves. Like that that got said to kids. I, 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 I can't believe it. Like, I, I, I literally, I do believe it, but I can't believe it. I saw a lot of that, get out, you don't belong. You have a different skin color, you like different people, you like a different gender, it's not, you're not okay. There's something wrong with you. So it was that exclusion of certain people that I think was really the most damaging. I felt pretty ashamed to see most of the people that I talked to making what they call jokes. There were times where I was called like a member of the Klan or a racist or a Nazi or something like that because I don't necessarily share the same views as other people, which is an interesting double standard by the people who say tolerance is key. It upset me pretty badly because I didn't expect any of that to come from kids at Junction City, but... It's sad that it got to that point here, especially at a school. It was like the worst day of my teaching career. This was not a safe environment. I made a decision that the first thing that needed to happen was we needed to kind of take the flashpoints out of the building. Um, and so I made the, the order before the end of the school day um, no political signs on campus, no apparel, no paraphernalia. We were going to be apolitical. What appeared to me in the aftermath of the election that next day was that there was a, a freedom to speak one's mind that hadn't existed before. You know, it's not the election that caused this. It's that people somehow felt, I don't know, validated or able to express things. I just don't see it linked. Like, I think it's great that students were able to share their excitement at that, that a presidential candidate that they believe in won. 
I would hope that they would feel free to do that in schools. I want them to be able to express their excitement just like a duck game. I just think it was be maybe partially because of the fear of the sheer thing that he won and so many people were expecting him not to win that they didn't necessarily think ahead of time how should I act if he does end up winning because it was so sudden that they just went out of line. My concern has never been about who's on which side of the political spectrum or what your ideology is, uh, that it's been about the way students treated each other is at the crux of it. It's not even about who the president is. That's not what was stressing people out. It's the fact that their beliefs were causing them to put other people down and that's where like, we draw the line. Um, and it wasn't anything physical, but everything said was really emotional because I would have never thought my friends, my peers, the people I am around at the, at the high school would be like that. A lot of good kids, I think, engaged in behavior and in statements that they wouldn't, they've never engaged in before. Well, the fact that people did it was obviously really bad, but the fact that they were willing to do it to people who were their peers, who they work together, who they go to riot night with, I can't believe that that kind of, that just total lack of compassion for, again, for a student, a kid you've known your whole life, and you think that's, you, you don't have it, I, it's I, like, I am at, I am speechless. I, I can't believe it. It makes you wonder, like, how, how much, like, people you know feel this way towards you, and it's like, kind of like makes you wonder a lot and it makes you even more like, uh, I don't know. Listen, it just created this environment of animosity and a real division between, it was an us or them situation, it seemed in a lot of classes and to a lot of people, which it didn't have to be. And all, it, it's not all the people who were excited that caused any kind of um, occurrence of discrimination. It's. Um, the folks who were explicitly being discriminatory about race and saying things to people just because they were um, people, students of color or Latino students. I think there was more light shown on the conservative side of it, that situation, but I think there was definitely on both sides of it. It's, certain groups of people definitely took things way too far on both sides and were not um, appropriate in what they were saying to other people that day. And that was about the time in which I realized, yeah, no, there's definitely not something right around here. It's just full of hatred. Fourth period, Mr. McCray made an announcement and it really got to me. He, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said that we are all tigers and we all have the same stripes and that means we're all equal. Just made the statement that we all live on one planet, we live in one country, one county, <laughs> we're members of one school. Uh, we have a lot of different stripes, but we're all tigers um, and that we needed to treat each other with civility um, and just ask that we bear that in mind as we went forward. And they came in and said that we need to show like compassion towards each other and not like hatred and stuff and that he would like everyone to go out to the parking lot and if needs be hug another person and stuff and just say nice things to each other. Like as cheesy or whatever as it was, it was it was necessary to do so. After the shot kind of wore off a little bit, it turned into a reaction of like, this is not okay. And kind of a mad dash to figure out how can we positively influence our school and change this atmosphere immediately. The way that we heal is to hear each other's stories, to do so without being defensive, to accept the role that we have in protecting each other, um, to extend empathy, even in the face of disagreement, and to do it civilly. I think we can create a better atmosphere here at Jackson City High School by taking action and realizing it, even though the situations have cooled down since that day, there, 
sooner or later something's gonna happen again where everything's gonna arise and no one's gonna know what to do like it, they did it a couple of weeks ago. We were not prepared. We were not prepared. It, it feels like a failure, you know, on our part that we weren't better prepared. It also feels disappointing, I guess, somehow that that was something we should have been prepared for. When conversations turned from just going back and forth to being like putting other people down, um, telling someone that you've gone to school with your whole life that they need to get deported, that's when teachers should have stepped in and a lot of teachers did um, but a lot of them didn't so we have to be the balanced stable place that kids come where they can be exposed to a side other than their own and through multiple lenses uh, and explore and learn about the variety the diversity of opinion that exists in this country I would feel sad if what came out of this was the the um, sense that I only feel like students of color were hurt on November 9th or that um, Latino students were the only ones hurt on November 9th. I have certainly heard of people feeling hurt because their political perspective um, was not safe inside of our schools and I, I think we might be further hurting our students by forcing everyone to stay silent about the election and forcing everyone to um, keep their um, candidate t-shirts and stickers at home. I don't think we're teaching students to respectfully disagree and to learn about the other side by forcing silence. I wanted to talk about it with some of my friends and just talk about, I can't believe that just happened. Like, that's crazy and then it ended up happening, but then we weren't supposed to talk about it all, and still people are pretty on edge about it. Everybody said they were like gloating and stuff. I just don't think it was gloating. I think it was just them being happy, and I don't feel that it's the right thing to do to like get mad at them for being happy. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is discri being discriminatory against them because, I mean, they have the right to um, be happy about something just as much as somebody else has the right to be upset about it and say how upset they are about it, then they have the right to say how like happy they are about it and how that makes them feel. You know, if we're all talking about our feelings here, then, you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's only fair that both of us get to talk about our feelings, you know, both sides of it. But I feel like everyone should have the right to their beliefs and their emotions of what they're feeling. If you were happy about Trump winning, then I feel like as long as you're respectful, um, then it's totally fine for you to be happy about that. I don't think that your emotions or your beliefs should be shut down because it's the wrong, um, because you believe in the wrong thing or because you wanted the wrong team to win. Um, if you want to celebrate or if you want to be upset about the loss, then that's fine as long as you're respectful to other people. If we can start talking about tough, contentious topics safely inside of classrooms where people learn the value of differences and but also feel safe enough to share different maybe unpopular perspectives um, that's a good place to start we need to understand other people's viewpoints we need to understand that not everyone agrees on the same things like I don't agree with some of my friends politically, but they're still my friends. And so, you know, I feel like we should still be able to work together. We should be able to be more accepting of other people. Like, talk to them on how they think about it. Like, be civil about it. Don't just yell at them, be like, no, you're wrong. Like, no, just talk to them and like, see what they, like, how they believe in that. Or um, <clears throat> talk to them in a nice way where they're like, well, I believe in this because, or uh, I think this person is going to make our country better because, or be civil with them, just don't, like, fight with them. That's what you believe. That's what I believe. I still like you as a person. I'm not going to change that just because you believe in something different than I do. Um, and that's kind of the respect for me is you just let someone do what they want to do, and if they don't want to change their mind, then that's fine. You don't have to be rude to them or be negative towards them. First of all, because we're not going to really help fix the problem in the school if we don't fix the problem inside ourselves. And a way to solve 
the problems that happened in school would be to have people realize that you are affecting not only one person, not only two people, but you're affecting so much more. You're affecting the environment, the environment of the school. You're affecting how people are learning. You're affecting how people may think of themselves. And it creates just this huge effect of one thing after the next. And if we could create awareness for what other people are going through continually, then I think that people might understand that their words and their actions have a lot more effect than in the present moment. This school should be a safe place for people to come and ex Yes, we have our rights for freedom of speech, but we should know when to apply that. Don't stop speaking out. Don't stop showing what you believe in, but don't use it as a weapon against others. Using your opinions in a proactive and helpful manner and not in one that hurts and destroys. I wish that more people would, you know, choose to love each other and, you know, get over their differences instead of bringing so much negativity from both sides of the issue. I just, I would like to see more people try to get along and not just, you know, cause so much division. I think to solve it is that everyone just needs to understand that we are all a human race and that we're all the same. Our skin, our culture does not define or separate us because we're all a human race. We're people, we're humans. We might be different color, we might, you know, be have different cultures, but to the point we're all humans, we're all the same. It doesn't matter yeah. our culture, it doesn't matter anything. It matters we all have the same chance here at school. I believe that everyone should should be treated equal. I am a United States citizen. I was born here, I was raised here. I deserve much better than the way I was treated before. I personally, in the future, want to live in a safe community, want to have a family, want to be able to have the same opportunities as any other person does. I want to be successful in life and I want my life in the future to be happy and like with no, there's obviously going to be worries and like stress, but I at least want to live a life that was meant for me in the way that I want to make it and stuff. Just get along, hold hands. Not judge others by the way they dress or their skin color, et cetera, et cetera. Let's just keep it cool. Yeah. It don't matter who you like, just be nice. <laughs>